this video is going to give an introduction to what graphs are. So let us look at a couple of pictures first. These first two pictures have two relatively um, simplistic graphs. Both of them have six vertices. The vertices are those blue uh, circles that you see. And graph G has five edges. Those are the uh, gray or dark gray lines going between the vertices. And graph H has six edges. Again, the little bit lighter uh, gray lines here going between vertices. Um, here are two more examples of graphs, K and L. Uh, both of these are a little bit more complicated, complicated only in the sense that they have quite a few more vertices and edges. They're not actually considered complicated graphs yet in the grand scheme of things. Notice what is different about these lower two graphs. Um, both of them have now edges that are crossing. Please note, however, just because two edges cross each other in that picture representation of the graph, for example, right here, that is not an indicator that you actually have a vertex there. The vertices are only the clearly indicated, um, if you will, dots. They don't have to be blue, but in all of these examples, the vertices are the big blue dots. Okay. And if you're interested in looking at more images or pictures of uh, samples of graphs from very simplistic to very complicated, if you do a, a search online, be careful if you just search for graphs, you typically get graphs of functions, the same as if you graph things in your graphing calculator, not graphs like what we're talking about right here. So a couple background pieces of information before we get into the definition of a graph and some of its components. And the first thing that we need to talk about is what is a set? So a set is simply a collection of distinct objects. Now one of the key things about a set is the order in which those objects don't matter and you have distinct or all different objects. So an example of a set right here is the set one, two, three. Notice the three objects are the physical number one, the number two, and the number three. They are separated by column, uh, commas, excuse me, and that indicates where your different objects actually are. And the curly braces on the outside indicate that we actually have a set as opposed to some other mathematical object. Now, Notice the second example where you have the curly braces that indicate it's a set. You have the objects separated by commas, and you've got now 1, 1, 2. This is actually bad. Okay? What's bad about it? You have the 1 repeated. So in fact, this is not a 3-object set. It is only a 2-object set. The 1 should not have been repeated. That second copy of a 1 was not distinct. It wasn't different from the first copy of 1. It's still perfectly fine as a set. It just, if you, somebody was asking you to give a 3-element set, this wouldn't be it. Okay? And last thing, because the order in which you write the objects don't matter, this last example right here is in fact exactly equal to that first example. It's still a set. It's still the objects that we're looking at are, are the objects 1, 2, and 3. Okay. Now, compare and contrast this to ordered pairs. Okay. And I am assuming that you guys have worked with ordered pairs before. So ordered pairs are also dealing with objects, but it's a list of objects. Here, when you talk about list, the order in which you write down your objects matters. So if you think in terms of the examples of ordered pairs, you notice somebody like 1, 2, somebody like 1, 1, somebody like 2, 1. 2, 1 is not the same as 1, 2. And notice also 1, 1 is a perfectly fine ordered pair. It's perfectly fine to have duplicated copies of your same object because it's not a set that requires distinct objects, you would keep both copies of one right there. Okay, Totally different in terms of if it, you had curly braces. With a set, the first and the third example under ordered pairs would be exactly equal if those parentheses changed to curly braces. And that middle guy would actually collapse down to a one element set of just one if there were parentheses instead of, if there were, excuse me, curly braces instead of parentheses. Okay. So that's the key difference. Notice you can tell what's going on simply from the fact you have parentheses versus curly braces, and in terms of what you're actually doing is very structurally different as well. Okay. And we're actually going to use both of them. But we're going to start off by needing to use sets. So if we look at the definition of a graph, a definition of a graph is defined as a combination of two sets. Those two sets are the set of the vertices for your graph, 
and the set of the edges for your graph. And they are listed in that order, the verte vertices first and the edges second. Both of these are set, so we will throw all the vertices into a set. It doesn't matter the order we write them down. We'll throw all the edges into a set. It doesn't matter the order we write them down. And then that picture, those pic like those pictures we just looked at, those four graphs, this is just a visual representation of the underlying structure of the edges and the vertices you actually have in your graph. Now, the vertices can be whatever you want, but there is some special thing criteria that you need for your edges. And the special criteria that you need for your edges is an edge has to have or has to have some correlation between two vertices. In other words, the endpoints of the edge have to be two vertices in your graph. Okay. Now let's see what that would mean. Turns out there's different types of edges, depending on how these edges are actually developed and put together. I'm going to talk about two of them, and these are the two most common types of edges that you'll see. The first one is known as an undirected edge. If you don't see the word undirected, if you only see the word edge, it is an undirected edge. Some people call this a simple edge. So if we look at a picture or a visual representation of what this edge is, suppose we look at this edge E1 in symbols. It is curly brace A comma B and curly brace, in other words, a set of A and B. In the picture, notice the two vertices are the A and the B. The edge is that line between A and B or running between those two points A and B. Notice also there is no sort of direction on here. You literally just have a line. So it really didn't matter if you r listed the endpoints of your line A first or B first. It's still the same exact line. And that's an undirected edge. In terms of things that you do with uh, graphs, undirected edges are super, super common. They're typically one of the most common things you see. The other super, super common edge is the directed edge. And a directed edge looks as follows. You've got somebody here, if we look in the picture, again, I just put in vertex A, vertex B, so we still have endpoints A and B. In this case, though, instead of having a simple line going between two vertices, we now have an arrow going between two vertices. This arrow right here is indicating direction, hence the name directed edge. What it tells you is if you were trying to travel across that edge, you're only allowed to go in the direction of the actual arrow. In other words, this is like having a one-way street and you're only allowed to go along the street in the direction A to B. Okay? Versus over here on the undirected edge, there is no arrow. This would be like a two-way street and it doesn't matter which way you go because you can travel in either direction. Now, in terms of symbols, notice the difference in symbols. Symbols, edge E2 right here is denoted by an ordered pair. Why do we denote it by an ordered pair? Because with ordered pairs, order matters. And here's what that corresponds to. The first position of the ordered pair corresponds to where you start or where you can start traveling along the edge. The second position of the ordered pair gives you where you can end up along the ordered pair on the directed edge if you travel it in its correct direction. Now something that your author does that not everybody does is your author will often put a little arrow above the ordered pair that indicates, hey, we are traveling along this edge starting from A going to B. It's a really tiny visual just to indicate, hey, don't forget directed edge, we're going in this direction. Please note most people don't bother to do that, but it is something nice when you're first drawing out or writing out directed edges. Now, this of course begs the question, what do you do if the arrow or the direction on your edge changes? Okay, So E3 here, or edge E3 here that we're about to write out in symbols would be the edge that's going in the opposite direction of E2. So we still have A, we still have B, but now our direction has changed. Don't overthink it. Ordered pairs give you an order in other words, order matters. So what happens here if you change the direction? You're going to flip the ordered pair. Here, we now start at B. Start at B. We end up at A. And if we put the little arrow on top like what your author does, you have just a straight little arrow that says B to A. This now is your edge E3. And that is it in terms of writing out the edges for a directed edge. Please note, 
in all three of these edges, E1, E2, E3, directed versus undirected, all of them are grabbing the endpoints of your edge, A and B. What's different between all of them is whether you've got curly braces indicating a set where order doesn't matter, whether you have parentheses indicating an ordered pair where order matters, and over in those directed edges, whether you actually write which endpoint first or second. Okay? If you are sloppy in your notation, and people do get sloppy in their notation as they go quicker, and as they're more comfortable with graphs, if you get sloppy in your notation, what happens is you know what you're doing, hopefully, but if you don't use the proper symbols, there's no guarantee that somebody else does. Okay. So let us finish off with an example. So example here, suppose you've got two graphs, and what we want to do is we want to pull out the vertex and the edge sets for each of these two graphs. So for graph G, notice graph G is defined as the combination of the vertex set and its edge set. Okay? Now, vertex set is always just listing out the vertices in your graph. If you have a picture representation of your graph, all of this information is actually on the graph itself. So we're just going to read it off the graph. The vertex set for graph G is simply pull those names of our vertices. So here, A, B, C, and D were our vertex names. And for our edges, we're now going to look to see which edges are actually legitimately in this graph. Okay. So here, notice, and I'm starting here on purpose at vertex A, just to be strategic about grabbing all of our edges. We have the, ver the edge A to B. We have the edge A to C. We have the edge A to D, and that's three out of our six edges. Okay. So let us look at our edges, and I went ahead and flew in all of the edges that we're going to get to. Because this is in the, each of these edges are an under, undirected, A, B, A, C, A, D. Okay. Next, if we go to vertex B, notice the set B to A already highlighted, meaning we already grabbed it right here. So we're not going to write down B comma A again as a set. Instead, we're going to grab the two edges that we haven't talked about yet. So that is BC and BD. At this point, if we go strategically, come down here to vertex C. Notice we have CA and CB, but they have already been grabbed previously in our list. So the only new guy that we haven't written down yet is C to D, and that grabs our last edge in the graph. And if you do go all the way around to starting at vertex D, notice there are three edges that touch vertex D. All three of them have already been written down in our list of edges, however. Please note some of the symbols that are going on here. In both the vertex set and the edge set for G, you have big curly braces around all of your vertices or all of your edges. And in your edges for graph G, each of those edges is a two element subset of your vertex set. Okay, So there are curly braces involved here. There's commas between them. Now, if we look at our second graph, this graph is a little different than GSY. There is a second graph. So for this particular guy, each of those edges are directed edges. Now, no change for the vertices. You still look at the names of all of our vertices. In our case, they were very uncreatively named 1, 2, 3, 4. So our vertex set is simply those four guys. Now for our edge set, here our edges are no longer undirected edges. They're directed edges. So each of these guys will be ordered pairs. Each of the ordered pairs are going to start at one endpoint, and, and then the second position will be where we end at. And so we look at these guys, each of these vertices, and I'm going to be strategic again. If we look at vertex 1, notice you can't start at vertex 1 and travel out from vertex 1, so no ordered pair will start with 1. If we look at vertex 2, any edge that's an ordered pair 2 comma something. We'll start at vertex 2 and travel away from vertex 2. And right here, it looks like there's exactly one option, 2 to 1. So that would be the ordered pair 2, 1. That would be our first guy that we would write down. Now, the set of edges is going to fly in all six of them at once. So let us highlight them as we grab them. So there's 2, 1. Now, that was the only edge that left 2. So next, I'm going to go to vertex 3. Vertex 3, we have an edge that goes 3 to 1, 
and 3 to 2. Notice the third one goes in the wrong direction, so we'll pick up both 3, 1, and 3, 2. We're now at our last vertex, vertex 4, and notice all three of those edges leaving vertex 4 are actually leaving vertex 4. So we have 4, 1, 4, 2, and 4, 3, and that does give us the last three ordered pairs of 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3. Notice how I was reading the directed edges off of the graph is actually the same way that you write them down in the ordered pairs. Okay. So that is a crash course on the basics of a graph with examples. Uh, there's tons, tons more to graphs, but that is the very basics.